Welcome to the Strength and Conditioning Education webinar series where we're speaking to a series of coaches within different sports about their experience within SNC. Today we're delighted to welcome Sam Vickers who's working in the, the world of golf. Sam is lead for sports science, medical and performance at the National Golf Centre at Woodall Spa. He also runs his own golf performance company and is also a consultant for the PGA. Sam, great to have you with us. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today. I know, I know how busy you are. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Great. Let's um, let's dive a little bit more into you then. Tell us a bit more about your journey, your background, what you're currently doing. Um, and yeah, let's go from there. Yeah, so kind of, I guess, like a lot of people sort of end up in this industry, um, ended up in a sports science educational background, you know, college into university, uh, post-grad, you know, the typical pathways, obviously then um, further upskill into professional qualifications. Um, I spent a lot of time early in my early years uh, lecturing in sports science. So that kind of gave me a really good, strong academic background straight from um, my sort of post-grad and actually during that and then kind of realized that you know obviously if I'm going to go into that world of sport and the kind of long-term coaching pathway that I've always wanted at that time the, what was the best way for me really and that's kind of as someone who played a lot of golf and saw kind of a bit of a gap in the market certainly in that moment in time roughly sort of 10 years ago that's where then I sort of set my own business, sort of consulting, um, staying in, in within academia, but then started obviously working with quite a lot of professional athletes and niching down into golf over that sort of period of time. And that's where we've ended up. Oh, very nice. Good. No, it's, it's a nice journey to hear that. It's always good to see here practitioners' journeys about how they got to as well. So SNC has obviously played quite a big part in your journey. Um was that something you kind of specialised in or was it more kind of global sports science that, that you were looking at in? Is it evolved the way throughout your career so far? Yeah, so so essentially it was overall sports science is what I studied in. Um, when I was lecturing, I specialised in the uh, psychology and biomechanics was the two areas that I kind of focused on mainly. As I kind of was looking to, um, again, maybe this is the goal for me, Typically, the people who come from a golf background are probably a little bit more technique orientated. Uh, whereas, obviously, if you're probably from, say, like an athletics background, you'd probably be a bit yeah. more into the physiology side. So I was kind of always been very biomechanically orientated. And that kind of led me to go, right, where can we get sort of how can we take the sports science side into the everyday golf world a little bit more rather than just being a golf coach? How can we link that to? And obviously, when you think about strength and conditioning, it really is the biomechanics and the physiology yeah. integrated into into together. So that's kind of how I sort of niche down into the uh, the strength and conditioning, and you know, sort of in my everyday workings. I guess the great thing about working in golf is, you know, fifty fifty. I'm spending just as much time working on the biomechanical side as I am the strength and conditioning, albeit they're all yeah. in the same umbrella. No, yeah, nice. That's good to hear. Let's get a little bit deeper then into. The actual sport and the sport of golf then so kind of benefits really what benefits have you seen what benefits are there specifically for golf performance that snc can bring yeah and that's, it's a great question and i think often something that's a little bit misunderstood um i mean as someone who's worked with golfers from the dp world tour all the way down to just your weekend recreational golfers of all ages uh playing levels i think you, you kind of see um two slightly different angles i'd say at the elite level it's about staying injury free uh reducing yeah. that risk of injury so they can play and practice more they're traveling around the world um, and we know obviously at the top level distance plays a massive role um in how much money you earn uh, and obviously strokes gain data and that's how we start to look at the maybe the statistical side obviously that all applies for the amateur golfer but obviously typically the amateur golfer people who um you know work all the time probably not naturally good movers, probably don't come from a, a very sporty background, lots of, you know, general aches and pains, surgeries, knee replacements, the whole the whole lot really is we're just trying to get good physical preparation in there first and foremost to help them move better and feel better. And obviously in turn, we know that reduces the risk of injury. We know that helps them move better in the golf swing, probably become a little bit more coachable. So I guess you could say that the same thing but the, the starting point is a little bit different to what the, the key objectives are yeah and those guys still want to hit the ball further right anyway <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> and, and again we know that's relevant but they have to we 
I always think, you know, a lot of the, the academic research that we look at and the measurements, if we can kind of improve certain key metrics with a professional golfer, because they move so well anyway, that will probably yeah. see a, quite a jump in speed and distance. Whereas obviously for the amateur golfers, they're not good movers, both mechanically and physically. So there's always a little bit of a longer term process there that's needed. Yeah, no, that's really refreshing to hear from the movement side of things as well. It's definitely not the fact of, right, let's just get you in the gym, let's get you stronger. That movement first approach and laying that base level of, of movement and foundation level of um, of stability, if you like, is, is massive. And that's going to enable them to, at that elite level as well, like you said, they're good movers, but allow them to build those key physical characteristics, if you like, further down the line. So, no, that's great to hear. Is there anything like movement obviously being another one is being the big one, but is there any other kind of key physical characteristics that you guys look to develop within your setting with potentially that elite level or say a junior athlete getting close to that level or ever progressing along their golfing journey? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, my, my kind of philosophy is very much kind of working uh, towards the ground reaction forces. So kind of how does, you know, what are the primary ground reaction forces in the golf swing? And then how does the training interlink to that? Obviously, when we break that down, every single human being, we need to have good levels of strength. And obviously, that's quite a vague term. Uh, and often we kind of how people try and develop strength, I think, across the industry is sometimes a bit confusing. And I think in the world of golf, we the the culture, if you will, is always been a little bit of a sport of just about flexibility and um, getting more mobile, more flexible. And we think that's the, the most important thing. Again, we know from the research that doesn't always correlate. We like it with any human being, we'd want good range of motion. We want good mobility uh, and control. But we obviously need high rate, high levels of strength in end range of motion and power output. So it's kind of with every individual, you're obviously going to try and focus on that. But depending on that individual starting point, an elite golfer who it's probably a little bit easier to go straight into high levels of strength and power training. Whereas obviously for an amateur golfer who's probably never trained or seen a gym before in their life, we just want to train them the basic movement patterns that might start even at body weight, get some mobility in there, get some new recovery tools in there. And over time, then we can really start to load up that system. Um, so they, they would always be the key focuses. But obviously, nice. again, it all comes down to what is the foundation and starting point for them individually. Yeah, great. And then obviously you've been in the sport quite a long time now. Have you seen any changes in this um, in physical development over the years? Have you seen a shift one way or the other? And and how's that kind of looked for you as a as a practitioner? Uh, yeah, 100 percent. I think, you know, when I, I was playing golf and at university, so, you know, 18, 19, 20, and that was what only 10, 11 years ago is even then there wasn't really physical prep strength condition wasn't really a thing and what and what it was is certainly wasn't what I would class as proper strength conditioning um that's evolved significantly over the last 10 years I think there's been some really good people in the industry people I'm kind of quite familiar with who work for England Golf who are academic researchers as well as practitioners people on the DP World Tour who are really kind of showing okay what what physical uh, capacity transfers to the golf swing and yeah. what doesn't is probably a better thing um, I think what I've seen as I touched on earlier is there's always been a bit of a culture of what we'd call kind of probably low-grade intervention where it's always about stretching you know a lot of foam rolling um, a lot of instability unstable work you know like on a, a BOSU ball for example balancing one leg and we know that doesn't really actually have any yeah. transfer, transfer to the biomechanical movement of golf especially when it comes to club head speed for example i think that's changed significantly yeah when we think of like the general principles of strength conditioning where we probably look at more like strength and power and speed training in you know compound lifts etc obviously we can go a little bit more in depth to that but the point is is golfers have chronically probably underloaded in training in, in yeah. the years gone um and I would say now we're starting to see golfers of all levels starting to train like actual athletes, not yeah. not kind of, you know, maybe a little bit, if you will, physio rehabilitation led principles. Yeah. There's less of that now and there's more performance focus. So that's evolved a lot. But from my experience of probably spending quite a bit of time out on tour and seeing a lot of this, you know, certainly the best players in Europe how they train I would still say we're only really 50 percent of the way there which okay. is still probably quite surprising for a lot of people but yeah. we've moved forward a long way but we're still a long long way to go 
Yeah, that's really interesting, isn't it? Like you think about the golf professional today, like they understand movement and having that education, if you like, or that knowledge to underpin exactly what you've talked about there is going to be massive. What do you think the current level of knowledge is like in terms of S and C in in the golf professional today? Obviously, very varied, or um, what do you think? Yeah, I, I would say quite varied, and and I would say there's two reasons for that. I think one, it depends on the background you come from. Um, yeah. You know, and I would say too, it's what is your. I would say the world of golf is quite unique, rightly or wrongly, where obviously we have kind of separate professional qualifications out there that all kind of come from different angles, but are designed for different people. So you could be a golf coach and then go into obviously the world of strength conditioning. And we don't tend to see that too much in other sports. Um, and I think sometimes that can blur the lines where we kind of then lose the real quality of what strength condition output should be because it can become a little bit technique heavy. Not to say that can't work. And I know practitioners out there who do both and do it brilliantly. Yeah. Uh, but I think sometimes it's, it can blur the lines. I think on top of that, again, in the world of golf, where it's often being chronically underloaded in the gym, is people who might experience an injury in golf, which is way more common than you'd imagine. Typically, they'll end up going to some form of like medical professional, like a physiotherapist, yeah. chiropractor example. And then that kind of can lead to getting on the pathway of lots of stretching, lots of balance work. Um, and I think then all of a sudden we kind of see that misunderstanding of what actually, again, transfers. So I yeah. do think it's quite mixed. I do think it's quite mixed. Um I think that is changing more and more. And we're, again, the evidence, the the academic research, the science is because of what it's showing, it makes it a little bit more black and white for people to kind of go, well, yeah, that might look good. You might feel good when you do it. But unfortunately, there's just no transfer to what that that is actually doing. So that, yeah, that would how I'd probably be perceiving it at the present. No, nah, great. That's great. Sam, listen, that's great. It's great to get your insight in this in this side of things as well for, for golf performance. So like I said at the start, I really appreciate your time. I know how busy you are, but thanks for joining us today. Pleasure. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks. Take care. See you in a bit. Cheers. Bye.